Hey everybody, it's Sam here. So today I'm going to show you how to make this, I'm going to call it a floating frame card. I first made this version during a Facebook Live and I need to get this filmed for YouTube as well because this is a 5 by 7 version with a slightly different arrangement. You've got these beautiful die cut flowers in the middle there. And then I thought I'd revisit it again and I did it in a 6 by 6 size or on a 6 by 6 card, sorry, because the frame is smaller. The frame is 4.5 squared on this one. And I just thought it was quite a nice way as well for you to see two very different styles. You know, this one's more classic. And then I've got my bright kind of personality thrown on this one. I've made this one during a Facebook Live and actually I pulled a winner during the live and they've won this card. But I loved it so much that I wanted to make another one that I could keep displayed in my craft space. So that's what we're going to make today. Once this one is up on the channel, I will have it linked up here. So if it's not flashing up there yet, I haven't made it, but it will be coming very soon. These are also great for many occasions. You could have a big milestone birthday number in the middle. You could have a photograph of someone. You could have it like a window and that you're looking out into a lovely scene. And you could have anything displayed around this, any theme. It could be, you know, sport related, any kind of hobbies. There's loads you can do with this. You use it as a blank kind of canvas and then build up anything on top. I've done these also as top fold cards. You can see how they display really nicely there. And I've got box envelopes for both of these to fit in and I'll link those up here as well. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make this one. So first of all, we'll make the frame. So I've made many sizes of these deconstructed shadow boxes before. You want to cut yourself four pieces of two and a half by four and a half. On all of the pieces, you're going to score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half and two. And then on... Two of them you're going to leave as that, just like that. And then on the other two, you want to score along this long side here on both sides. And you're going to score at half an inch and four just down to the first score line. Flip it and again, half an inch and four just down to the first score line. These are just guides. We're going to cut down these so it doesn't matter which way they're facing. But you want two pieces that you've scored with these extra score lines and then two pieces that are just plain you know, with the four score lines there. Fold and burnish everything. Okay, so on all of the pieces, I find just taking a little tiny piece extra off of the right-hand side just helps when you fold everything in. So I'm just popping it in my trimmer there and just taking a thin layer. So just do that on all of the pieces. So I've done them on these two here. So the one with just the four straight lines, you're going to fold and the edge where we've, and that edge where you've just taken off that little piece extra, just add your glue and then you're going to fold one of the panels and the one with the glue over and then that one over the top. And because you've cut that little bit off, you see what I mean? It just folds nice and flat and you've got no bulk. And then just fold it back and you've got that tube and you've got a true square tube again because we cut that little bit away. So you want to have two just plain straight tubes and then we're going to have two that we've cut this little detail into here. So with this one... Again, on that side where I've just cut a little bit off, you just want to cut away those squares in the corner completely. I'm just removing the score line, like so. And then on the opposite side here where you've got the other two, you're going to cut down and then you're going to cut down but across to the outside there, to the edge of that second score line. So again, cut down. And I always find it better to come up from this way. Like so. You've kind of got like a chimney effect. This is the base. So this one here, again, we're going to add our glue. And you're just going to stick it together exactly the same way. So fold that one over. And then that one should sit nicely over the top. Again, fold it back the other way. If you've got anything kind of overhanging when you fold it back that way, see I've got a tiny little bit there, just trim that off. Again, it's just going to tidy everything up. There we go. So I've got two pieces like this and I've got two pieces like this. So it's up to you. You can have these at the top and the bottom. Just turn one around or you can have them on the side. So I had them on the side. So I'm going to do them on the top on this one. So I'm going to have the join of these ones on the bottom inside so that's my join there and that's going to stick inside like this so i'm going to add a little glue just on the bottom there and also just behind that sloped little triangle part 
If you've got a mat like mine, something with the lines on, just use those to help you line everything up so you've got a nice right angle. Just push that in, a little bit of pressure so that glue can adhere. And then again on this end, a little glue in there. And just under there. Keeping everything nice and straight. And then the last one here, if you just add your glue. Again, like so. And then just slide those ends in. And that will give you your perfect square frame. Again, just check your sides. You could also use, if you've got something like this, T-square ruler, just pop that on the corners make sure it all sits nicely okay so the frame's all ready so i've already prepared my card blank here so this is a six by six card blank or it's a shop brought so they they're cut from a four card so they come in at about five and seven eight squared i've added the same pearlized card that i've used here this is the centura pearl which i've used on the frame there and i've used it also on my matte layer so if you if you've got a true six by six card blank then you'll want this to be a piece of five and three quarters squared otherwise for me this is a piece of five and five eighths squared so that's on there and then i've got this lovely detail here so i've made this using kitchen paper paper towel hand paper whatever it's called lots of different things i've um since learned and i've created that effect that embossed effect using this stencil here so this is called the floral mandala stencil and I launched this recently on Craft Stash, and um, this kind of happened by accident. So um, I've since done a tutorial on how to get this effect using kitchen roll, toilet roll, and I'll just show you a few simple ways to create this effect. So I'll link that up here. So I've cut this so it will fit perfectly behind the frame there, and I just thought it was a nice little bit of detail to fill that space. But like the the five by seven I showed you, you can fill all this with flowers if you would prefer. So I cut this so it's four and a quarter. You want it to go behind there because this comes in at four and a half. So I've covered it already on the back with double sided tape, and I've just sealed the edges with cellar tape, and then I've put red liner tape on the top there. But that's all dry. I could you know add some colour and stuff to that but I'm going to be doing a follow-on tutorial of that technique but using it with all your different mediums so different paints, pixie dust, ink, mousses, sprays, <laughs> see what lovely effects we can get with those. Right, just taking all the backing off there, decide which way, I'll have it that way. I want to get this right in the middle, like that. And then I'm going to take the backing off of this. Okay, and then with the frame, I'm going to add a little extra glue onto the back here. Make sure my card is the right way up. So I'm going to have it as a top fold card. And then I'm just going to carefully place that over. Just gently just laying it on there for a second. Just so I can check, I think I need to go a little bit off to the left. Okay, happy with that. And then just add a little bit of pressure there. Now you've got your floating frame. So I've already gone ahead and die cut and then inked up the same flowers that I did on the other one. Like I said, I loved it so much that I want to keep <laughs> I wanted one for myself. So I've got the same sentiment there. Craft a happy life, which I think is lovely. And it's from this really fun set. It's called Craftiness Sentiments. And it's part of the collectibles range of uh, sentiment stamps from Creative Craft Products. You get 22 stamps on this one. And they're lovely. And you've got your little icons there as well. This one's good. You are the glitter in my glue. And you colour my world. That was another one I really like. So I've got my sentiment ready there. I've popped it up on some foam. Again, I've stamped it on the same centura pearl there so it's got that lovely shine to it um i might position my one a bit different actually it'd be quite nice to show two ways because just to show off a little bit more of what's in the middle there so i might have this one let's just place that on there for a minute we can kind of audition everything i just bring this one here so you can see 
the difference as well because obviously this one I've done on a pink card base whereas that one's just all white so it really does you know those flowers really really pop but I love the arrangement of the flowers but I'm going to just have it slightly different because of the way I've added that sentiment so we'll do those ones up there and then I guess we could still have it like that we we'll just move it up a little bit kind of like this I think it's nice to just see a couple of different arrangements and then it's always when you add the green that you start to, it just finishes it really nicely. But then because it's a frame, <laughs> I do like it framed. <laughs> but it's nice to just show you that way as well. But I think I'm going to go with the original because that's the one I fell in love with and drop that in the middle there. Now I'm just finishing it off with some gems. I've just realised I didn't cut enough of these ones. So I'm going to cut two more of those. And you'll see that when I um, upload the photos onto my blog. But these here are just some holographic or iridescent, I guess, um, faceted gems. And I got them from, I think it was B&M. So that's the finished card, apart from two of these, which I'll add later. Isn't it wonderful? Really, really pretty, great for, like I said at the beginning, you know, if you've got a big milestone birthday number that you want to put in the middle there. There's so many different ways to, to use this one. Like I said, the 5x7 one, I'll be getting up onto the channel very soon because I know lots of people prefer that size. As always, all the product that I've used will be linked in the description box below this video. I'll have some other shadow box tutorials coming up now as well that you might want to watch next. And if you've enjoyed today and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on anything. And give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today too, because it really does help out the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again. Bye.